Tarek Kamisa was a promising art student at San Diego State University. The recently engaged 20-year-old had a part-time job delivering pizza. He was a great writer. He was a great photographer. His dream someday was to work for National Geographic. My younger brother was the best person I have ever known. He was funny and kind and charismatic and generous and just one of the most beautiful souls. Tony Hicks was just 14 years old and admits he had a tough upbringing. I didn't have a relationship with my father. I, I felt abandoned by my mother. When I was very young, I had several family members murdered due to gang violence. And it was kind of easy for me to pursue a gang as a surrogate family. On one fateful night, Tark and Tony's lives would collide in a tragic way. Tony Hicks was 14 when he shot to death Tari Kamisa, a college student delivering pizzas one night in 1995 in North Park. Though a minor at the time of the crime, Tony was tried as an adult in a history-making trial. The youngest and first juvenile sentenced under a state law that has since been taken off the books. As Tarek's family tried to heal, his father Azim says he began to look at Tony in a different light. How did we create a society where children kill children that are victims at both ends of the gun? Five years after the death of his son, Azim made the decision to sit down face to face with his son's killer. I was able to look in his eyes and touch his humanity, that I got the spark in him was no different than the spark in me or you or anybody else. And at that point, I told him, Tony, you know I have forgiven you. Joining us from San Diego, California, please welcome Azim and Tessarine. Thank you both for being here. And let me start off by saying, of course, my thoughts and prayers are with you because the pain of that loss will never go away. But you have forged ahead. Tasreen, as I understand, it took you longer than your father to find that healing spot with Tony. And you, I guess, kind of beat yourself up and took it out on yourself in unhealthy ways. Yes. It was um, much harder for me um, than it was for my dad, or I know it was difficult for my dad, but he's a um, much more evolved man, I always say. But I was very angry for three years after losing Farik. Um, I swallowed all my emotions. I just didn't want to deal with it. I kept myself busy with work and going out after work, you know, being there for my parents. I felt like I needed to be really strong. And I was, I was really hard on myself. I went through um, a lot of grief and a deep depression, but very quietly. And it was, it was hard. Azim, Tasreen just said that you're a much more evolved man. I think everyone watching right now wonders, how do you get to that place? Your beautiful child is taken from you, but you've evolved to a level of forgiveness that I think most people can't imagine. How? I think the answer is uh, through your spirit and your soul. I, you know, I think it'd be very difficult to navigate this with your intellect or your emotion. But let me say that every father should have a joy like a daughter like this. And I'm very proud and love her dearly. But I had uh, my outer body experience after uh, I got uh, uh, a call from homicide to tell that uh, Tariq had been shot and killed. Mm -hmm. You know, my knee-jerk reaction was I made a mistake, uh, a mistaken identity. Of course, he just got engaged to his girlfriend, Jennifer. I called his home, and she picked up the phone, and, mm. and she couldn't say anything. She was sobbing. I was in my kitchen. I lost strength in both my legs as I fell to the floor, hit my head against the refrigerator, curled up in a bowl. And the pain was so excruciating, I... I uh, I believe in God. I grew up as a Sufi Muslim. I uh, started to meditate when I was 20. I lost Tariq in my early 40s, and I left my body because, you know, the pain was so excruciating, I couldn't be in my body. I believe I went in the loving arms of God. And it's like a nuclear bomb that had exploded in my heart. And when the explosion subsided, I came back to my body with the wisdom wow. that there are victims at both ends of the gun. It didn't come from my intellect or emotion because it's very difficult for us mortals to do that. Yeah. 
but it was a download from a higher power. Mm. And that eventually led me to forgive Tony. Coming up, how that higher experience ex that Azim just described brought him to the very prison where the man was being held who took his son's life. Tony will also join us after the break. Welcome back. College student Tark Kamisa was murdered during a botched robbery in 1995. And I've been talking with his father, Azim, and his sister, Tasreen. And joining us now is Tony Hicks. He was 14 years old when he shot and killed Tark. At the time, Tony was the youngest person in the state of California to be charged and convicted as an adult for murder. The three of them together now work to combat gun violence among young people through the Tark Kamisa Foundation. Tony, thank you so much for joining us. You know, I, this is just, the more I read the details, the more I'm just amazed and in awe of all three of you. You um, agreed to meet with Azim five years after Tark's death. He came to the prison. I cannot imagine the anxiety, the fear, the, what was going on in your mind um, about that meeting. How do you describe seeing his face for the first time in person? Um, it was a difficult meeting for me. Azim, my grandfather and Azim had forged a relationship over that five years of after I had murdered Tariq. I was reluctant to meet with it, um, Azim. I didn't feel like I deserved his forgiveness. For, um, I didn't feel like I deserved forgiveness for what I had done. What was the goal of the meeting, given you did not feel you deserve to be forgiven? Why meet with him? I know that it was important. I know it was important for him. I felt like if I can provide uh, Azim some form of closure, that was all I can do, because I couldn't bring his son back. I couldn't change what I had done. So if I can give him some kind of closure, then that's what I would do. Azim, this whole show is about finding a way to heal from hurt. Again, the details here are remarkable. 2018 was Tony's parole hearing. Um, you said that the commissioner told you in 35 years he'd never seen the victim's father and sister advocate for the offender. And you, in a, in a sense, convinced the parole board to release Tony. I mean, you are exceptional in this healing path. Well, my attitude was uh, you can't bring Tariq back. Um, and I always saw Tony as a victim. He had a tough upbringing, as he shared with you. And my uh, sentiments to the commissioner was that uh, Tony has a lot of work to do. Uh, and we will... Uh, have him at the Tariq Kamisa Foundation, you know, uh, we know that he can shift many other young people because uh, the foundation reaches tens of thousands of kids every year. And uh, if there are some young ones thinking about joining a gang or getting involved with drugs and weapons and crime, Tony could change their minds. Yeah. So I told the commissioner that... Uh, the work he has to do it can't be behind bars. That to advocate, uh, you know, both Tasreen and I advocated for his release because we knew in our hearts we've saved Tony. Wow. But the more important thing is how many kids he's now already helping save as a result of Who being involved. Who he could help heal on his journey. Tasreen, I think a lot of people can again relate to your view of this. It was a struggle to accept Tony, and then this light goes off in you where you said you have two brothers. You now see Tony as your brother and that he's filled this hole. Yes, I do. It was a long journey for me. It was a 20-year journey for me. Um, so in that time, I healed a lot. The more I did in Tharik's name, the more I served community and young people, the more I healed. And I was able to, in 2015, um, reach out and see if Tony would want to meet. And we met for the mm -hmm. first time in 2015. And it was, a, 
instant connection with me and Tony, to be honest. Um, when I met him for the first time and I walked into the prison and he gave me this huge hug. And I always say that Tony gives the best hugs ever. Um, I thought he was going to break my back, but we just had this casual sibling banter right off the bat. And we spent seven hours together the first time I visited Tony. And I just realized that he was a really kind yeah. person that made a horrible mistake wow. and he deserved a second chance. And I am, he's, He's the, one of the biggest supporters of me and in my life. And mm. you miss that sibling love. It's hard to replace a sibling love. I never thought that I would feel that way for Tony, but I absolutely But here you do. are, and Tony is volunteering with the foundation. It's a remarkable story. We always ask ourselves, what are we able to forgive and what are we able to heal from? You are all just inspirations in so many different ways, and I appreciate you joining us today to share Terrific story and the work you're doing with this foundation. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us.